if I may, there are some uh, quick little things that I want to test because I know YouTube and it is likely to uh, try to stop me from watching trailers. Still want to do it though. Gotta watch the cup video. Oh, <laughs> you're talking about the thing with, uh, oh my God, I saw that on, on my feed earlier today uh, with the acorn. It's a little bit brutal, but sure, let's start with that. And for those who are unaware of what's being talked about here, let me just uh, switch so I can show you. Basically, uh, some cop went a little bit cray cray today, or at least yesterday. It, it is so strange. Uh, let's check the actual video. Uh, I think that it is somewhere. Can I can get my car back. Like, I don't care about the argument. I don't care about... I don't even know what the argument is about. I just want my car. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with anything. I know anytime we get into it, whether I'm right or wrong, I, he puts his hands on me or he threatens to put his hands on me. It gets very violent. I'm gonna go through the whole dialogue, but some context was added to it. So the cops were uneasy suspecting something to be afoot, right? With um, the guy possibly carrying a weapon. I think it's this car here. Oh no, the, no, it was actually the cop car. That's the part that makes it even worse. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! You know. Like, I what is the actual hell? I hit in the car! I hit in the car! Oh! I, I'm, I'm good, I feel weird, but I'm good! Yeah, you should... No shit, you should feel weird. You just... He unloaded his whole mag. And the way that he rolls, man. That dive. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, literally, he thinks he's like in a bad boy sequel. I don't know. And then the lady cop is asking her to get back. Oh, mate, you could have murdered the guy. That's insane. Let, let's double check the details here. I think this was covered. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, right. He actually has one. That's a lie. And after a search around the area, police find the vehicle. So they end up arresting Jackson, but not before Deputy Jesse Hernandez pats him down, right, appearing to confirm he has no weapon. Okay, hold on. Let's take the whole corn, context. Two cops, several dozen bullets, and an undeniable miracle. And we're talking about this because we just got some of the most mind-boggling body cam footage I've ever seen. And if you've hopped on social media, maybe you've even seen it. But I got to talk in detail about what went down and what's happened since. Because all of this actually started one morning back in November in Florida. What? Florida? Who could have guessed? We have this woman calling the cops and telling them that her boyfriend, 22-year-old Marquise Jackson, stole her car. And so the sheriff's deputies arrive and she shows them texts that he allegedly sent her threatening to damage the car. With a photo okay. including what appears to be, or at least what the cops believe to be, a firearm with a silencer poking into frame. And then Jackson himself actually shows up and he claims that the car is at his girlfriend's mother's house. But a phone call to the mom quickly confirms that's a lie. And after a search around the area, police find the vehicle. So they end up arresting Jackson, but not before Deputy Jesse Hernandez pats him down, appearing to confirm he has no weapons. Then with him clearly unarmed and handcuffed, the officers put him in the back of the patrol car. And that is where the normal part of the story ends and the batshit crazy part begins. Because while the female cop is talking to Jackson's girlfriend away from the patrol car, she hears her partner, Hernandez, yell, shots fired. It's okay. What? 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 Yeah. And from the perspective of his camera, his colleague was running towards the car. He could have shot her. He could have shot her. They 
absolutely lit up that patrol car, believing that somehow Jackson got a gun and he fired at Hernandez. With the girlfriend heard screaming and emotional agony for minutes on end. <laughs> But then, That's in like insane. a scene straight out of Pulp Fiction, Jackson comes out of the vehicle completely oh, unharmed. No. Not a single bullet graced his body. And not only that, he was still also completely unarmed. So you might be asking, well, Phil, what the hell just happened? Right, because when we look at the footage from Hernandez's perspective, it doesn't clear anything up. If anything, you're just left even more confused. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we get this like frame by frame? Can we spot the acorn? Okay, dude goes into frame. And what? It's, it's there! It's fucking there! We can all see it! <laughs> we can all see it! No shot! No! No, dude! It bounces off the. Oh my god! Just fire! Just fire! Just fire! Shots fired! You know. But now, all this time after, the sheriff's office has released a statement saying that as Hernandez was walking up to the car to search Jackson one more time, he heard a pop, which he believed to be a gunshot. But of course, it wasn't, with investigators noting that an acorn fell from a tree onto the roof of the car. Which means, yes, these cops almost turned this man into Swiss cheese because they got frightened by an acorn. This guy was going 1v1 against the invisible man. He thought he got shot while playing cops and robbers by him. Dude, the Ice Age squirrel strikes again. What in the actual hell was he thinking? Look, here's, here's something, right? I understand. I have family in law enforcement. Now, not in America, in a different country. I understand the stress that is put on a lot of officers, but this man clearly is not meant to be in the force. Whether it is PTSD or whatever that triggered him, remove him ASAP. Holy shit. Himself. Now, of course, Jackson, like we said, he made it out alive miraculously, but he also says he feels traumatized for life. With him writing in a Facebook post, all I could do was lean over and play dead to prevent getting shot in the head. Windows were shattering on me the whole time as bullets continued flying across me. I was scared to death and I knew all I could depend on was God. I ignored everything and prayed. I haven't God. been the same since and I don't think this feeling I have will ever change. I truly believe I'm damaged for life. And as far as Hernandez, uh, he was not charged with anything. He also wasn't fired. He ended up resigning back into December. The county sheriff also telling reporters. But of course, that is always, that is a very sad part of this because these individuals can just usually, even in the case of them being fired, they can just move to another county. They don't even need to change state. They need, just need to move to another county and then be hired again. It's insane. I remember. Let let me see. I, these are conversations that we've had in the past and it's actually quite interesting that this is the video that you asked me to check today because here in Denmark we just passed, at least we are currently in the process of passing a law that will make it so that cops here are required to also wear stun guns, the yellow ones, on different sides to make sure that they do not mistake them for the actual weapon right with these discussions will always brought the perspective of what happens in other countries like in the us and here comes the amount of training that is put into play to my recollection the us has about eight hours in conflict de-escalation there here we have it. Here's a Vox article. Now, this one is from 2016, so pardon me for not having newer data. Police Academy spent 110 hours on firearm self-defense. They spent eight hours on conflict management. Guys, no way. This, this is not okay. This is absolutely not okay. Now, the, the way that they collected this is data from 2006, right? For the Bureau of Justice Statistics. So, it is rather old, over a 20-year period. That being said, it's still relevant. It uh, is very much reflective of the way that a lot of cops are trained. For those of you who sometime will like tune in to learn about the different shootings or whatever happens, that they are tr a lot of them are trained in that warrior types training where they are not meant to react, but rather to act, always be on edge. 
they are not to trust anybody. Like, let's put it in perspective in comparison to other countries. Can we get something here on, uh, like, uh, training? Obviously, I'm not going to sign the, the disproportionate killing from police officers. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty big. We know that already. But in terms of training, hours of police training, Finland, happiest country in the world, spent a lot of hours in there, around 3,000. The US, on average, 500, like, just a little bit over that. I mean, come on. And even Canada, like your neighbors, don't have that much of an issue. This should absolutely not be happening. Yeah, they should put so much more of an emphasis on the gun safety. And that's the thing, right? Uh, like, when you mention something like this, people immediately tune into, oh, they want to take away our guns. No, we don't want to take away your guns. I understand, like, people want to have defense, especially when cops are acting like this. Uh, no, it's just about regulation and adequate training.